Greetings and hello again, adventurers. Today we're going to have a look at Curios, our provided review copy coming from Alderac Games. Fans of light deduction and prospecting, not like the old-timey codger kind, the one that's a synonym with speculating, will love the quick hit of adrenaline that this game provides. The fact that it's in a neato metal tin, well, that's just a delightful bonus. Let's see what's inside, shall we? Inside the game's tin, we first up have an instruction manual that does a good job explaining the game's phases using bright, informative illustrations throughout. Past that, we have the game's insert housing the cards for both the locations and the values, and this larger channel which holds all the game's gems and pawns. Bagged, thank you very much. Of note that the game's gems are the same acrylic-y goodness present in Quartz and the Snow White reskin of Quartz. Very, very welcome here. Let's set up for a game and I'll take you through it. Transitioning smoothly into the setup, you'll put out all four location cards and some number of gems at each based on the player count for the game. Here, we're set up for four players, which means 12 gems at each location. Each player will take five of their color archaeologist tokens, setting aside the others, which we'll come back to in a little while. Shuffle each of the four market stacks separately, and then deal one card from each stack face down into its respective site. After that's done, shuffle all the cards back together in one deck and deal out, in a four-player game, three to each player. The object of our hopefully mummy-free adventure is to plunder each of the game's four sites of their treasures, making the most of the limited knowledge you have to, do, to deduce which of the artifacts are the most valuable. Each treasure could be worth an odd number of points from one to seven, and the worth is determined by the single card set aside for each location during setup. Between all the players, you can know exactly how much each is worth, but playing together isn't exactly in your best interest. Each game has two phases, searching for treasure and recruiting more archaeologists. In your first phase, you will send one of your archaeologist pawns to one of the sites one player at a time. The first person to each location only needs to spend one of their pawns, but the second player has to spend two, the third three, the next two four, and so on. If your opponents allow it, you could gain two treasures for a measly three pawns, but then your opponents will have to start to wonder what you know that they don't. If it's your turn and you don't have enough pawns to claim a treasure, you must pass. And once all players have passed, there's a bonus treasure to be had for the player who has the most archaeologists at a site. If you're tied, neither player gets anything. Classic, am I right? The next phase is where things get really interesting. Since you've only got five pawns, your plundering of these sites is only going to be so effective. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get more? Say, maybe as many as seven total? Well, you're in luck, you wanna be Henry Jones Juniors. Starting with the first player, phase two gives you an opportunity. Reveal one of your market cards in your hand to the entire table, and you'll be rewarded with another pawn. Just one, though, for now. You can reveal any card you like, or you can decide that your information is just too valuable and forego gaining another follower. Once everyone's made their choice, you'll reclaim all your pawns and start again. Gameplay proceeds like this, round over round, until two or more treasure sites have been completely plundered. Once that's done, that will signal the last round of the game. You'll still play out the round you're in. Once everyone passes, the game's over and you'll flip over the market card at each site, revealing how much each of that color treasure is worth. Add up your points, and whoever netted the most worth for their museum wins. First off, the bad news. If you said to yourself, it seems a little too simple, then you're right. Players looking for a stronger deduction mechanic can be excused into the next room where heady games like Cryptid await. Also, this isn't much to look at. Each of the dig sites is prominently colored to match its treasure, with the notable exception of the Colosseum, which is supposed to be green. While it's obviously not red, yellow, or purple, other sites pop so clearly to their color that this one is just a little bit of a disappointment. Additionally, and while the look and feel of the gems is great, there just isn't a lot of table presence to be had here. This is especially noteworthy given that we're talking about an Alderac game, a production house known for especially vivid games, and I'm looking directly at you recently released and coming soon to the channel, Mariposas. However, if you're able to set all of that aside, what you've actually got here is a surprisingly fun, light deduction game that can be played in 10 to 15 minutes. There are little touches here that absolutely delight me. The individual cards form a triptych, but four, like a quad tick when laid out in numerical order together, and while that's never likely to occur in a given game, it's a delightful touch. 
Actual gameplay ends up being far more tense than you think it will be as you try to decide if you're going to telegraph the fact that you're holding all the low cards of a given treasure, and it's even more risky when you're just holding the three and the five, making your bets on that particular gem even more high risk. The difference between four gems worth four points or four gems worth 28 points is literally the difference between winning and losing most often. And taking that situation even one step farther, there's all but guaranteed to be one other player who's got the missing card and is waiting for someone to telegraph the play. It's moments like this that elevate Curios to something more than just a filler game. You end up actually playing your opponents more than the game, and there's legitimate strategies that start to evolve when players who know each other well play the game. We've had games where precious few cards ever get revealed because even one value becoming public knowledge can set a lot of dominoes into action. Component-wise, the gems are obviously great, and the first player, Lantern, fits the theme wonderfully and adds, being made of metal, a nice touch. Fitting this much fun into a tin box and short clock isn't easy, but Alderac nails it here. If you're looking to warm up a group for a longer night or need a palate cleanser after a heavier game with the potential to become a legit contender for the main event game with the right group, Curios is a perfect choice. While Curios isn't going to be the best game on your shelf, it's certainly one that's good enough to hit your table regularly and is a perfect gateway game for deeper deduction titles like channel favorite Cryptid. The theme is perfect and it doesn't try to be more than it is. Let's go through our checklist before I give you my final thoughts. In the box, rulebook clear and non-gender pronouns. The 12-page rulebook is succinct, clear, and gives lots of examples of gameplay. It also uses the second person you to denote the player throughout. Iconography clear. There's a missed opportunity for colorblind players here, with the market cards having symbology in the corners, but those symbols don't match to the treasure sites. As mentioned, the green artifacts are an awkward match to the green and blue market and treasure cards, which can cause some additional confusion. Packaging well done. Yes. The metal tin is a neat shift from the standard cardboard box, and everything packs back into it neatly and cleanly. Neat. On the table. Good representation. The players aren't represented in the game, and there aren't any characters. Just cold, hard logic. And plastic gems. Component quality. Did I mention plastic gems? They're great. The metal first player lantern token is another example of something that's far better than it needs to be and feels great on the table. Replay value. Pretty high. While there are only four treasures and four value cards to be had for each, there's plenty of fun in deducing and sorting out which ones to try and maximize value in, and which ones to try and get your opponents to sink their time and effort into. Both are valid, which gives lots of repeat opportunity to the game. Fun to lose. Indeed. Our games often come closer than we think, even if we've made tactical errors, and games are quick enough that playing another one is almost always demanded. The gameplay itself feels good enough that even if you know you're going to lose, there's still some things to do. Curios provides all the desired deduction one could want in a lighter game, does so quickly and without any extraneous filler. Upping the player count from the standard 4 to 5 may not seem like a big deal, but being able to bring this one out when game night gets even a little bit bigger is a huge bonus. The fact that it's good enough to game to keep hitting my table? Well, they don't call them gems for nothing. I'm Nicholas, reminding you to help protect the game population. Always leave your cards. <laughs>